This is TJR. Time for a little bit of Q&A. And this is going to be a follow-up to the video that I posted a few weeks ago entitled, What If The Beatles Never Happened? I had seen the trailer for the new movie yesterday and it got me thinking about this. It also got me thinking about a, a short story that I had thought up sometime a while back uh, in regards to a time traveler changing history to where the Beatles never happened. I want to take a moment to comment on the comments that I got on that video. That video spawned so many great comments from all of you, and I just thank you for all the amazing comments. I've read every single one. I've not been able to respond to every one, but I've certainly read every single one. And there were some comments that I felt of course, merit a larger discussion and should be shared with everybody here in this video. And so I'm going to start, first of all, with uh, two comments here, one from Sandy SDR and one from Vince Abate or Abate, if I say it correctly, uh, both commented on how much money they would have saved had the Beatles not happened. And I have to agree, I would have saved a lot of money too, but it's been money well spent in my opinion. I'm going to uh, point out a comment now by Richard East, who wrote, Remember the old argument, who's better, the Beatles or the Stones? Could the Stones have replaced the Beatles in this scenario? A number of people brought up this subject, and a couple of people did rebuttals, uh, some of them stating that, uh, that the Beatles took a hand in getting the Rolling Stones signed. I'm not 100% sure that that is true or accurate. If it is, then it could have had some effect. But what I would say to that is, without the Beatles, would the British invasion have happened? Without the British invasion, would the Sto Rolling Stones have happened on the global level that they did? The Stones were much more blues influence, and I don't think the Beatles were like a huge influence on them. I think the Stones could have still very well happened, but I'm not sure they would have become as huge without the British invasion. However, if you've ever read the book uh, Old Gods Almost Dead, uh, you, there is a, a recounting there of the time that John Lennon and Paul McCartney uh, visited with the Stones during their very early days. Uh, this was after the Beatles had already blown up. Uh, the Stones were sort of on the verge of blowing up. And John and Paul, you know, said to uh, Mick Jagger, you know, you're our favorite, you know, new live band. And they said, we have a song for you. And the song was, I want to be your man. They played a little bit of it to them. And, you know, the Stones said, yeah, we'd like to do that song. So John said, well, we better finish it for you then. And um, they went off to the side, finished the song, and then <laughs> presented it to them. And I remember uh, in the book, the way it's recounted is that Mick and Keith were both extremely impressed that they could just go write a song and come back with it. So there was that influence uh, by the Beatles as so far as just, not necessarily in regards to the actual music that the Beatles wrote, but this idea that, hey, you know, you, we could write songs together. We could be a songwriting team like them. So who knows how that might have affected things. But I do think the Stones definitely could have happened. Yolanda Johnson writes, if the Beatles never happened, I believe that Lennon and McCartney would have been a powerful songwriting team. Those two were destined to write songs. God would not have let their songwriting gift go undone. Now, first of all, I'm going to have to disagree with you on this. Uh, this is because philosophically, I do not believe in predestiny. I believe that life is a series of choices that we make, and those choices take us down different paths. I'm not going to get too much deeper into that particular part of this uh, than what I've just said. Someday that might make a good topic for a video, why I do not believe in predestination, but not right now. But I do want to address something else about your comment here. Um, this is the reason, because Lennon and McCartney were such a great songwriting team, this is the reason why I decided that in this fictional timeline story, John Lennon gets killed in a car accident very early on after the breakup of the band. Car accidents can happen to really anybody and they can just happen for no reason. But also I thought it would add some pathos and irony to the story if the elderly McCartney, when talking to the time traveler says, 
in regards to John Lennon's death, yeah, poor soul, he blew his mind out in the car or something like that. Or, you know, he didn't notice that the lights had changed. Not those two lines together, but either one or the other. Probably I think the more common thing might have said was, yeah, he didn't notice that the lights had changed. And, you know, referencing the line from A Day in the Life. And I thought that would be neat to have small little hints of the great songs, the greatness of the Beatles just kind of come out in very common ways in how Paul would speak. I didn't want to do too much of it, but I just thought here and there it might be a really effective uh, dramatic tool. A number of commenters uh, said that they want to know when I write this story, you know, let us know when it's finished. Uh, commenters like Isaac uh, Zerke, hopefully I've said your last name right, uh, mentioned this, and that's very flattering. Thank you. To be honest, I don't know if I'm a good enough, you know, prose writer to actually write this story. I feel like I could conceptualize it, but I don't know if I'm good enough to actually write it. I was actually going to approach one of my family members who um, are good writers in that regard to perhaps either co-write it with me or perhaps uh, write it and then maybe I might just make some suggestions. I hope that that happens. I hope that maybe I can find someone to help me finish writing that story. Val Bro writes, if The Catcher in the Rye was never written, John Lennon would be alive. Whenever I read about somebody doing something horrific because they were influenced by a book or a painting or a song, I never blame the creator of the art. I blame the person who made that choice based on the art because it was their choice. I won't rule out the possibility that John Lennon's killer might have done things differently if he'd never read Catcher in the Rye. But one of the reasons why I always say blame the individual who did the crime, not the art that they say inspired the crime, is because if it had not been that particular song or that particular book, this individual, this unstable individual, would have probably encountered some other piece of art or media that they would then say led them to do what they did. Whether or not it would have led him to still murder John Lennon or perhaps someone else is anybody's guess. But that is a very thought-provoking comment, Val. Thank you. Brick Tolico, Brick Tolismo, hopefully I've said that correctly, uh, says, what if the writer of the movie called Yesterday was a time traveler too, who watched this video of yours, who liked the idea, then traveled back in the past to write it into a movie? But of course! On that note, Ernest Walker uh, writes, film has completed production and is ready to be released. So you put out a short video claiming that the premise of the film was originally yours? I'm skeptical. Uh, that's fine, go ahead and be skeptical, Ernest. I in no way claim to have thought of the premise of yesterday first. In fact, the premise is very different for yesterday than for my story. Yesterday just reminded me of that story that had been kind of you know floating around in my head for quite a number of years. And also, I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of such a story idea. There may already be published stories dealing with this very same concept. This brings me to another uh, comment, uh, or I should say topic of discussion. A couple of people brought up a short uh, British teleplay entitled Snodgrass, which asked the question, what if John Lennon quit the Beatles in 1962? I found this uh, teleplay, video, whatever you want to call it, on YouTube and was really entertained by it. Maybe I'll do a bit more of a review on it at a later time, but it is here on YouTube. You can find it. And it is a cool kind of alternate history uh, video. I recommend checking it out. Also, a couple of people brought up a Twilight Zone episode, not the original Twilight Zone, but one of the how shall I say, reboot Twilight Zones that were made. Uh, in this story, an Elvis impersonator uh, goes back in time and accidentally kills the real Elvis, so he has to take his place. Uh, this was also a really fun and enjoyable uh, story. I'm not a big fan of the Twilight Zone reboots, but I have to admit that was a pretty darn good episode. Once again, that's on YouTube. I recommend you go check that out. Soap Opera commented, my personal guess is the Beatles never happened. The Beach Boys were popular. Jan and Dean, Del Shannon also. A lot of people don't realize that Dylan was experimenting with electric. It doesn't mean he would have crossed over, but he may have, depending on who filled that void, we imagine. 
You know, yeah, I see a lot of sense in that. Uh, the folk movement was very huge during the uh, 60s. And Dylan, I don't feel, was that hugely influenced by the Beatles. I think that Dylan would have still happened. I think he could have even been bigger than maybe he was. Dylan was a huge influence on the Rolling Stones as well, or I should say on Keith Richards. So who knows, you know, that effect uh, would have still been present. But folk music in general might have become even bigger, especially if the British invasion didn't happen. A lot of people have brought up the Beach Boys, that the Beach Boys would have been much more popular, uh, much larger, perhaps the biggest selling act in America. Possibly, possibly very, very true. But without the music of the Beatles to influence Brian Wilson, I don't think Brian Wilson, uh, it's questionable. Would he, have, would he have been inspired to write and produce Pet Sounds? Would he have been inspired and influenced to create songs like Good Vibrations? Who knows? Robin Marco wrote, interesting video, but I wish that the narrator had gone into what direction rock music would have gone. Would it have died out or another band have taken the forefront? These are all really good questions. And I wondered exactly how much myself the story I had imagined would get into that. There is the possibility, of course, and a number of other people brought it up in the comments too, without the Beatles there, some other band would have rose to prominence and captured that cultural zeitgeist. Catch, captured that cultural phenomenon. That's very possible. Who knows? AJ Steele writes, what ifs solve nothing because they didn't happen? Well, AJ, yes, you're right. They don't solve anything because they didn't happen. But no one is trying to solve anything. Uh, everybody is just having a really fun and interesting discussion. This brings me now to a comment that was actually made on my Facebook page and actually by uh, an old high school friend of mine, uh, Mark Spurl who wrote, music would have gone in a totally different direction. Maybe rock and roll never makes an impact after the 50s artists. Groups like the Stones or the Who might never have been heard in the U.S. because the Beatles opened that pipeline. So all the blues-based acts from Britain would have never made it. No Yardbirds, no Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, etc. Makes you wonder what would have filled the void. And if, from what I've read in regards to rock history, there was a period there uh, where it seemed like rock and roll was dying out uh, near the end of the 50s. Elvis went into the service. Uh, Buddy Holly, of course, died in the plane crash along with the Big Bopper and Richie Valens. More and more the charts were being taken over by uh, innocuous pop singers. Record labels were trying to pass them off as rock and roll, but they really weren't rock and roll. So yeah, this is uh, you know a possibility that with without the Beatles, like I said again, the British invasion might not have happened. I want to end with a comment here from Mark Bastnight, who writes, Don't forget the opposite. What if John had lived? I think they would have toured and recorded together again, based on what just about every other band has done, including Hell Freezes Over with the Eagles. And uh, Mark, I, I agree with you. And I think that if there was ever a moment that the Beatles would have gotten back together, had John and Lennon not been murdered, that moment would have been Live Aid. There's no doubt in my mind that the Beatles would have more than likely gotten together for that. And who knows what that might have led to. I just want to close this video by saying thank you to all of you for just the amazing comments that everybody left. So many thought-provoking, interesting, humorous, and intelligent comments. I loved reading every single one of them. Everybody, thank you again so much. As always, if you like what I'm doing, please click like and subscribe to help uh, support this channel. And if you want to help me even more to create more videos, please go to the Patreon link and become a patron subscriber. Um, donating as little as the cost of one cup of coffee a month it makes a huge difference. And if you just want to make a one-time donation, you can do that. Uh, everybody, once again, thank you. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.